on today's Run to the Top podcast. People wake up and they get to January 1st and they want to get healthy, but they get stuck. So we create unbelievably exciting events that inspire people to get out and get moving. I really believe that challenge is where our real growth comes in play. And I think we should encourage people to be their best selves and take on challenge wherever that is for them. What we want to do is wrap that in fun. So that's the basics. We're in the experience business of creating these opportunities. We decided to start with our festivals of sport. If you said, okay, let's all go do the San Francisco Marathon. Well, some people can do that, but not everybody can do that. Welcome to the Run to the Top podcast from Runners Connect, where it's all about learning from the best and most inspiring minds in the sport. Together, we can train a smarter, healthier, and faster running community. Now here's your host, Tina Muir. Hello, this is Tina Muir. Thank you so much for joining me for this latest episode of the Run to the Top podcast brought to you by Runners Connect. Last week, we talked to Michael Hammond, who's the head coach at Runners Connect. Oh, and, you know, just a 357 miler, no big deal. (laughs) He had some uh, great advice for us, for runners of all levels. And it was really cool to hear his story. I didn't know it. And, you know, he had some great advice and just really cool experiences that he'd been through that he wanted to share. And I think there's something that you're going to really enjoy if you did miss it. This week, I have an episode I have been working on for almost a year. This lady is tough to get a hold of, and rightly so. She is one of the pioneers of the running world and has changed too many lives to count with what she's done as the former president and CEO of New York Roadrunners. She's now on a new venture working with Richard Branson. Yes, the Richard Branson. And I'm so excited to see where this goes, as it sounds like an amazing opportunity for her. And I really think they've got something here. So it's going to be cool to see how it unfolds. Mary and I talk about her running, her time at NYRR and what she's doing now. And let me just say this episode was definitely worth waiting for. I know you're going to love this glimpse into one of the faces of women's running. And she just has so many helpful pieces of advice and just her attitude towards running is just amazing. So if you're ready to meet Mary, let's do it. I want to say a big thank you to Body Health for sponsoring this podcast and for helping me with my training over the last few years. You can enter to win a pack of six perfect amino bottles for free by visiting runnersconnect.net forward slash body health. Thank you to Sockany for supporting the Run to the Top podcast. Running might be a low maintenance sport, but a good pair of running shoes is a must. Use coupon code TINA for 10% off at Sockany.com when you pick out your next pair. Welcome to the Run to the Top podcast, Mary. Thank you, Tina. Thrilled to be here. I am so excited to have you. It's been a long time coming and I'm finally excited to get to it. So I want to start with your background. I mean, obviously, there's so many directions I could go with interviewing you here, but I want to hear a little bit about you um, and what some of your favorite memories are with your background as a runner yourself. Well, thanks. Uh, (laughs) I actually started running relatively late in life as a senior in college. I grew up always trying so hard to be good at the stick and ball sports and I was really bad. And I actually, I wasn't fast either. I was the sub to the relay team in eighth grade, but I um, started rowing in high school. And through rowing, I found that when it came to getting stronger for rowing and making a boat, we would test in bench pulls, running, and seat racing. And among rowers, I was a decent runner. Mm -hmm. So I had a positive association with it through my rowing years. And then on a dare my senior year in college at a happy hour, uh, I agreed to do a road race the next morning. And my real passion for running and running career, so to speak, really began then and took off from there. Yeah, and a a successful one it ended up being. And, um, you know, as much as I'd love to even just spend, you know, an hour talking about your own running accomplishments and stuff, just a few things I am curious about. So 
when you think about when you were a runner, when it was you were really serious into it and doing your best for your own career, can you think about now when you look at competitive running now, how much has it changed since um, when you were an athlete? It's changed so much. I think I think primarily for the better. Okay. Now there's so much support around running and especially in the U.S., American distance running. I was never actually a super accomplished or even national level runner. I was a really good regional runner. I qualified for Olympic trials and the marathon, but I probably would have been good enough to aspire to one of the running groups Mm -hmm. and, you know, one of the distance groups. And I think part of my real passion uh, over these years of supporting American distance running, I think has come from you know, my little glimpse at that period in life where if you had a running group and you had at least a clear stepping stone of, of what to reach for and, and trying to take your running to another level, I probably would have tried. So it's changed a lot. And I'm glad I think there's many more opportunities today for young runners and athletes in other sports that switch to running to find a post-collegiate running group and run pretty seriously. Mm-hmm. So you're saying had it been available when you were running, you think you would have tried to be the full-time professional and done that, like you said, the post-collegiate group and really given it a go yourself? I don't know that I would have been good enough or brave enough to not work at the same time. Yeah. Odds were probably long. I paid for my own college. I had been paid for law school. So I was pretty, you know, I had debt. I was, I was pretty focused on, on, on working and, and, Running was a passion, but not something I saw as something I could have a career in. Mm-hmm. But I, I think I would have probably tried to do both for a while. And whether that would have made sense or not, I, you know, I don't know. But there are definitely more options today than there were then. Yeah, no, definitely. And it's funny you mentioned that. I've actually talked about this a few times on the podcast that I, I did try that lifestyle, but I just couldn't handle it. It, it was too much running, too much focus. So yeah. I needed a I needed a job as well. So um, I definitely hear you, but I was just curious with that one. And then what about now? Do you still run a lot or what's running look like for you now? I do. I always think it's a little bit problematic when, when given I work in running in sports and people say, do you still run? I think, boy, I really must have fallen far from looking like I run. (laughs) Yes. I, I, I run um, a fair amount. I love to run. What's most important to me is Mm -hmm. to be able to get out on a regular basis. So I'm pretty select with my marathons. I hadn't done one in a long time before doing Boston in 13. And I just had the huge privilege of running New York this past fall. So I run probably five or six days a week and typically at the half marathon, 10K distance and have had an amazing time running Boston and New York in these recent years. But I do, I'm very um, opportunistic in that if my teammates at Virgin Sport or other running buddies are doing a workout, I'll do a workout. If if I'm not with someone doing a workout, I don't do a workout. So it's mm-hmm. pretty nice not to have the pressure of a regimen and a structure and specific workouts and times to hit, but nice to have the company to pick up the pace every now and then. Absolutely. It kind of make, makes it more fun as well because you're just doing it as much as you want to do it rather than doing it because you have to do it, which changes your perspective. And uh, you said about running New York. So how how did that feel running New York after being the uh, race director for all that all that time how was it just being able to participate it was absolutely magical I almost didn't want to ever run a step again after <laughs> it, put it in a box and preserve it as a most amazing running experience it was surprisingly and strikingly similar in terms of my emotions to going down the course in the lead vehicle where my overwhelming emotion was one of gratitude, where you look at the crowd and you just, it's, it's, it's literally overwhelming. You know, we're going, well, first on the bridge was the big surprise because I, I realized I, I was so taken by the bridge. And then I realized it was because typically I go under the bridge for on race day to get ahead of the race. Oh. And I'm on the bridge and realizing I've never been on the bridge without cars and, and, and just like the runners, I took all my photo- photos off my, on my phone, I shot on the bridge, you know, shooting, shooting the city from, from, from the bridge, um, because I was just so moved by it, but getting into the streets and the neighborhoods is where just the magic happens. And it was so, so 
in the lead vehicle, I would always go down and just be so full of gratitude of everybody coming out. And I'd, I'd want to just, all I could think in those days was thank you, thank you, thank you. And it was, I wasn't expecting it. It was the exact same motion where I, I, I wanted to run wide on every tangent and, and high five people and say thank you and look people right in the eye and say thanks for being here because it's that that's just the beauty of New York. It's it's all the New Yorkers who come out mm-hmm. and especially the neighborhoods. It's it's not even the big iconic scenes as much as it is the people on the streets. So I had an amazing experience and had this great combination of a unique situation where I was running with everybody on my Verdon sport team. We were all running and then I was running literally side by side with Michael Caparasa, who is now the CEO and was the chief operating officer and a partner to me and Peter Chachin team when I was there. So it was like my world uh, coming together and, you know, a big, a big family day, friends day, and just really special and a nice chance to appreciate all the spectators and people of the city and all the hard work the team does every year to, to deliver it. Absolutely. And and I'm sure a big part of that was, uh, even though you're probably too modest to admit it, to see all that you'd done, this this legendary, amazing race that you had worked so hard for, got to put it into action. Although I'm sure you won't admit that now. No, well, exactly. <laughs> Especially New York. It's, it's, it's really, it's undoubtedly a huge team effort. And it's really, the beauty and the magic really is, it's, it's all these people uh, around the city who come together. So, I was lucky to have a, a little tiny portion and opportunity to to be part of the team who, who every year works hard to do it and feel very lucky to have done that. But it was, it was an honor to run it. And, and I've got to decide, do I never do it again or do I do 10 Ooh, more? That's a tough one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I guess you have to decide with that because uh, it, is it going to be one of those situations where it'll never quite live up to that? that one day so hmm, interesting well we will be looking forward to find out what you actually decide with that one so let's talk about um you know your your former work with well I guess New York Roadrunners as the former president and the chief executive officer so maybe for people who do not know what did your job involve with being the CEO of New York Roadrunners sure at New York Roadrunners our mission was to help and inspire people through running and we, um, when I started way back in 1998, we were best known for the marathon, but it was an interesting time when London was on the rise and Chicago, and there was kind of all this New York's now got competition. And at the time, there was an amazing framework. Fred LeBeau and Alan Steinfeld had the vision to have, even by then, 50 races, most in Central Park a half marathon in each borough of New York City. So mm-hmm. great events. And the beginnings of the idea of a youth program, it hadn't started yet, but the idea of a youth program. So what my job over all those years was one to build an amazing team, which we did, who all were really, really passionate about New York City and about helping people through running. And two was really lift what we were doing to a higher standard from the brilliant basics of you know, strong execution, but really to encourage more people to to get moving and move beyond what was then pretty serious running community, where today it's a very serious running community at core. Then it was a very, it was pretty serious runners were the ones running and races would be about the size of 750, 1,000 people. And over the years, what we were able to do was really build the base first by getting to about 200,000 kids in the youth school programs, all free that New York Runners puts on. And in the adult events now, most of those races sell out of five to 10,000 yeah. in the major half marathon in each borough is now, you know, quite significant in Brooklyn's the largest half marathon in the U S and the New York city half's coming up. And that's a beautiful compliment to the marathon in the fall. So our job at the time was to grow the reach of the events to welcome more people to running and really create a community. And what we love to do was marry the very grassroots of the kids and over time introduce free running to more and more people have the races be the catalyst to get people excited, get people to meet each other. And then we would wrap the pro athletes in and had a special commitment to American distance running as a way to really be added inspiration to especially the kids, but everybody for people to reach, reach their goals. So my job was 
to work with the team and increasing the programming, increasing the opportunity for people, really celebrating the boroughs of New York, beyond Manhattan, raising the money. We raised a lot of money for the youth programs, and then we raised a lot of sponsorship money, all to which helps defray the cost of entry fees and helps New York Orders put on more, more programming. So it's a, it's a flywheel effect of, of having the job of needing to develop the relationships and raise money and be able to pour it back into the community. So that's basically what the team and I did. And uh, they're doing better than ever flying now and getting more and more people moving in New York City. So it's been fun to participate now as a runner. Yeah, yeah. And I can also attest that I've done a few of those events, absolutely love them. And they've been great. And, um, and you mentioned, you know, about starting off with kids, why did you feel that it was so important to kind of build it at the kids level rather than starting just with adults? Well, it was very interesting, because at the time, the idea when I got there, the idea was that New York Rotors would raise money for youth programs, because at the time, public schools had stopped funding youth programs, so it, uh, youth gym classes. So that's a real issue, right? And that was a dramatic shift um, that had happened in the last decade where kids were no longer getting fit at school. So the idea was to raise money. And then I got there and said, well, we can raise money for other organizations, but we do running. We have classes. We have clinics. Why don't we develop a program that can teach teachers how to teach kids? Mm-hmm. And so we, right away, really the magic was hiring an executive director who named Cliff Sperber, and he took a program where we had at the time five kids in it, which was an amazing start in Red Hook, Brooklyn, started by a volunteer board member and a young dynamic um, runner. And then Cliff was able to really be our leadership and taking it taking it to another level. But we thought it was really important, and I, I think it's vitally important, and it carries over to my work at Burden Sport now. But getting kids moving at a young age and having fun with running, I think, is key. So if you think about New York City, there's a million and a half school children. A lot of them don't get the chance to be healthy and fit. And we could get them moving as adults, but we're we're doing a lot of, you know, getting people back on track. Well, maybe, you know, our our goal was let's get them on track in the first place and, and have them grow up with a healthy love of running. Yep, absolutely. And and so well it worked, which is which has been great. And okay, so of the over 50 uh, NYRR events there are, do you have a favorite? Is it the one we think it probably is? It's so hard, isn't it? I love <laughs> marathon, of course. Our generation created the New York City half. So, so much of what we did was build on the great events that were there that Fred and Alan started. So New York City half was one of the ones we started. So a special affinity for that and the idea of really at the time helping be part of making the half marathon a really exciting distance. I love the Brooklyn half because it's That's in the, the neighborhood. We yeah. Work with that. the neighborhood businesses to finish in Coney Island and support them. Mm-hmm. I love the Bronx half. So the borough events are probably my most favorite. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And then what about being the first woman to be the race director of a marathon? Now, did you see that as a big deal, as a big accomplishment, or was that something you were kind of like, well, you know, any woman with determination could do something like that? Or did you kind of realize how big of a thing that was at the time? Well, if you think about it, my generation is lucky because Catherine Switzer and all the women at the time, there was a woman, Julia Emmons at the Atlanta Track Club, all the women runners and the initial leaders had paved the way. I wasn't very conscious of it at the time. It's it's a little bit like when I was a lawyer and I was a partner on a team that didn't have women partners before. My appreciation for the importance of it grew in the time that I was in the role versus when I first got in the role in each case, because you realize as time goes on that there are still roadblocks to women in leadership and in sport and running, there's still roadblocks, mainly outside of the United States and outside the UK, but, but there do remain roadblocks. And I think it's important to do two things. One, always recognize those who came before us, but two, really, you know, work extra hard to, to support women in, in sport and in the business of sport. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I think you have kind of paved that way with become the, the Catherine Switzer of this generation with the way that women are following suit with that and women are trying to break down those walls and continue doing the work that you've been doing and 
you know, you mentioned about how big this was for New York and how important it's been for, you know, creating all these events with different distances as well, like focuses on the half marathon, focus on the 5K, other events, even the mile. But why do you think it's important to have other events outside of just the traditional marathon for people to choose from rather than just, you know, the typical ones? And then second part of this is, do you hope that other cities will kind of start to follow suit with this and kind of have their own series? I mean, maybe we see it a little with Chicago, but any other places? Yes. So I think it's really important because running is is much more than the marathon. And I think the marathon, you've got to be really careful. Only so many people can run marathons year in and year out. People have busy lives and the stress on your body Mm -hmm. can be significant if you don't have the time or the means to do all the work that it really takes in terms of core work and massage and really staying healthy, everything it takes to stay healthy for your marathon training, where the 5K and the mile are great distances too. And you can, I mean, I always say, look at professional athletes and the the build of the milers and, and they are the fittest, strongest looking people Mm -hmm. out there and fit in a different way. Obviously the marathoners and ultra marathoners uh, have amazing cardio and are really, really fit and strong, but milers are very strong and fit too. So it is not all about the distance and the idea that I do think high intensity is a real value too. And the idea that introducing people, but the miles pretty special in the 5k is a great distance and if you fit running and some high intensity running into your life it may be the best way for you to get healthy and fit it's not just about the marathon Mm -hmm. absolutely and thank you for clearing that up I think you know we're really starting to hear more and more about this about how I've been saying it and hopefully Mary will be the one to get it in a lot of people's heads that this is so important to look at other distances outside of the marathon So I want to go on to ask you about your current job as the CEO of Virgin Sports. So firstly, maybe for people who haven't heard, if you could tell us what it is and what does your job involve? Yes, you asked about other communities. It's what has inspired me is I I think there's a lot of opportunity in other communities around the nation and the world. Mm -hmm. I'm extremely fortunate to get to have another dream opportunity. I have always had this burning desire to take the model of community-based running and fitness on the road. And the idea being creating large-scale, super exciting events that can motivate people and inspire people and then find ways to connect them to getting fit and healthy all year round in their community. So when I heard that Richard Branson and Virgin wanted to get involved in running and cycling and fitness in sport, I just knew that that was what I really wanted to do next mm-hmm. and hadn't even been thinking about it. But our our purpose is to, what we like to say, help the, you know, move the world together, but it's really to help people get over the barriers that stop them from being their best selves, that stop them from pursuing their fitness goals. I mean, time and time again, we know people wake up and they, they get to January 1st and they get to points in their lives and they want to get fit and they want to get healthy and they want to do a run or they want to ride, but they get stuck mm-hmm. because of all the real hurdles and perceived hurdles that can stop us. So we come at it from a view of how can we create unbelievably exciting events that inspire people to get out and get moving and keep moving. So that's our background and our purpose. And I can tell you where we are and how we're doing, but we're having a, it's been, we're having a great time. Yeah. And you've just got the initial four festivals. So maybe you could tell us a bit about that to start with. Yeah. So ultimately, we're really about creating these irresistible experiences, I like to say, but experiences that you just got to be part of that make taking on challenge fun. I really believe that challenge is in pushing ourselves is it's often where our real growth comes in play. And I think for many decades, we said, come on out and just finish and And I think that's a great starting point, but I don't think we should hold back. I think we should encourage people to be their best selves and take on challenge wherever that is for them. Not doesn't mean the marathon, doesn't mean a five minute mile, it means whatever is a stretch for them. So our our what we want to do is wrap that in fun. So that's the the basics. We're in the experience business of creating these opportunities. We decided to start with our festivals of sport. And the rationale for that is we looked at the space and said, wait a minute. You know, so often, if you look at your friends and your family or your teammates at work, they often, 
if you said, okay, let's all go do the San Francisco Marathon. Well, some people can do that, but not everybody can do that. Mm-hmm. And then you think about, you know, some, some people in the family go do the color run and the ultra people are like, ah, I don't really yeah. want to. Do that. So we said, well, wait a minute. Why don't we do a weekend that's inspired by the music festivals in terms of multiple stages, multiple opportunities to listen to the bands you want to listen to. And we said, wait a minute, why don't we have the opportunity where everyone can be an active participant? So we'll have it th- this year. They're all anchored with a distance run, a shorter, fun, thematic, like chase run, and then fitness and boot camp and a bit of cycling as just a kind of entry point to, to building on that in the future. So the idea is sort of, we like to say the Coachella sport, multiple sporting experiences, challenged, right size for people, Everybody gets to participate. And then the key is really wrapping it in fun and in local music and fashion and food and art over time. It'll take mm-hmm. some time. But what's most interesting is, as I've gotten to know Richard, what's fascinating is how much we represent the way he is and the way he lives, which I think, you know, is very similar to our team mates here at Bird and Sport, but very much taking on challenge, but having good time. Like we have one go at this life and, and we better, you know, make it fun along the way. So we're really excited to add the culture and the fun and kind of help everyone take on that type two fun where it might not be fun in the exact moment, but you feel great about it all after. <laughs> yeah, I love that. And and so with that, the the running aspect, people can kind of pick and choose which events they do within the weekend. Like, can you, is it kind of like the Disney thing where you can do all of them or part of it or how, how does it, work with the specific running parts yes exactly so this year we're starting more with one day in most of the first events which are focused in london and san francisco but over time it'll be weekends so yes you can do them all it's a little bit harder now because (laughs) one day but our whole premise is that the best way to get people out and get help them continue to get out and get moving is through bringing people together so (laughs) Our proposition is based on bringing people together. So even you can buy your your L access pass to the event and and actually buy tickets for other people too. So you can you can do the half. Someone else here in Hackney, which is East London, can do the five point five k. Someone else can do the boot camp. You can have you and your friends do them, which is really great for the distance runner, right? To actually be able to gift or give other family members fun challenges that might be more inspiring to them Mm -hmm. and, or you can do them yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, maybe I might be buying some of my friends, some of these passes, even though my friends aren't runners, so they probably won't be very happy with that, but Hey, what can they complain if it's a festival? Boot camp. camp. (laughs) Exactly. Um, Okay, so the places you have right now are Hackney, Westminster and Oxford in England. Yes. And San Francisco in the U.S. So yes. how does it look like it's going to be expanding in the future? Are there any other cities you have in the pipeline for now? Great question. We'll hope to do two more in the U.S. next year and two more in the U.K. I think we'll be primarily next year focused in the London area in the U.K. and the U.S. It's a very good question because we have a few different opportunities we're already looking at and Wherever we go, we want to be supplemental to what else is there. You know, in Virgin, it's usually taking on the challenger in the industry. And for us, the challenger in the industry is not other people putting on events because from a mission and purpose, that's awesome they're doing that. But our challenge is the things that stop people, you know, the the comfortable bed, the uh, <laughs> the the super busy work day. Uh, and so we're just helping people get over those hurdles. But anyway, looking at where there's opportunity in different markets is something we're doing now. But to be honest... I say it's now, it's, we're really most focused on let's just have amazing experience with people and then we'll have plenty of growth opportunities from there. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, if you feel like coming to Lexington, Kentucky, I'm sure we have quite a few challenges if you want to come set up something there. I know that's probably not the top of your list, but I throw that out there. <laughs> okay. Um, and then, so if someone wants to get involved, what, what would they need to do for that for now? Go to our website or, you know, mobile enabled on your phone, but virgensport.com. Love to have you check it out. Come participate with us in any of the events on any of the weekends. We start April 30th, actually the weekend after the London Marathon. So people can stay and do the Chase Your Mate 5.5K or a little bit of boot camp. And then um, great in the middle of July, July 9th. I, I love the idea of a American, Canadian, British challenge someday because that's a great right around the independence days for canada and the in the in the u.s that could be fun that's the center really iconic center center of london 
by Big Ben, Piccadilly Circus, all alike. Um, and then Oxford, which is really fun, kind of college and university test at this, because I think that's going to be an interesting space for us. And then really excited about San Francisco for our first U.S. So come participate, come volunteer. We have just a few jobs right now, but, you know, look at the jobs we have. And we're looking forward to getting to work with number of people and host committees to really put these events on. Okay, great. And I will put links in the show notes at runnersconnect.net forward slash RC150. Okay, so I just wanted to ask, you know, you, you said about what you're doing here and you've kind of talked about it was kind of Richard's idea and what he was thinking about with things. But why is it that you felt like it was important to kind of bring more of this fun and you know, increase the participation of running? Like, what is it about running that you you love so much and feel that anyone can really be a part of? Two things. One, I, I really believe running remains the most accessible and most effective of all participatory sports mm-hmm. for most people. Two, I do believe increasingly it's important not to just run and not it's not so accessible for everybody. And even for runners, it's I think we're all stronger doing core work and the like. So I love this idea of mixing running and and fitness, but I believe it's so important for everybody. The big opportunity for me with Virgin is for all of us is when you take the word sport, which I think represents the best of challenge and camaraderie and Mm -hmm. everything that those of us who have a positive association with sport know. For a lot of people, it can be intimidating when you put Virgin in front of it. To me, it just opened the gate wide Mm -hmm. to a lot more people that might say, oh, well, that sounds like fun. And for me, you know, it's been a gift to have running in my life and fitness in my life. And, and I think for all of us who work here and for Freddie Andrews, who co-founded this with Richard and their crew who were riding the Cape Argus cycle race the day they had the idea, <laughs> it's all, we just want to share the support that we've all had in life that has helped us have fitness and, and running in our lives in a way that we know makes us better. And I want to help a lot of other people have the same. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's great. Thank you. And okay, so pipeline dream, like what do you see this becoming, you know, 10 years time? What would you what would you love to see? I'd love to see us being part of millions of people moving. I think we can be a real catalyst in a number of communities around the world. And what I would love for us to be able to do is do it in a way that we have signature events and programs for people, but that we also are able to shine a light on other people in other fitness opportunities, running opportunities in these communities so we can help lift people who are already doing this day in and day out in communities. So I I see us having a global footprint and I see us touching millions of people, really creating community and a spirit where people will come participate with us and, and one of my favorite, you would know, British, I've, I've picked up a little bit, give it a go. Like, I just love that concept. <laughs> yep. If we get our community right, you know, people will be a little more game to give it a go in, in their in their taking on challenge in sport and, mm-hmm. and in their lives. So if we can, over time, even represent a spirit mm-hmm. and an attitude and that empowers people, that would be pretty awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that sounds good. And uh, hopefully people can help along the way to help you get there. And I was actually going to ask you about the the lingo, if you'd, if you'd picked up a lot of the British saying. There's one in particular, which I've got in mind, which I'm sure you know that people, uh, that means make fun of, that people, I always tell Americans and they find it hilarious. That means make fun of. We won't talk about it now, but I'm sure you yeah. know what I'm talking about. And anyone who's been around British people probably does. Anyway, um, so what about people listening who think, okay, well, that's great for you. I'm, you know, I, I don't work for Virgin Sport, but what what can quote unquote uh, normal or recreational runners do to kind of inspire growth in their own personal running world and community. Oh well, first, just by getting out the door every day, you inspire people. You have no idea. We see it. We I used to see it time and time again especially when people are outside, when people see people running and when, especially on the rainy days and the tough days that other people realize, Oh, maybe I can do that too. And what everybody has to recognize is no matter your shape or size, when you get out that door, somebody else who feels like they look like you, it helps them realize, Oh, well that person's doing it. I can do it too. Mm -hmm. But I think also the idea of something like the festival of sport, invite people to come with you mm-hmm. and actually maybe participate with them the first time. We, uh, in fact, here, Chase, your mate, our 5.5K, which is 110% distance, 110% of the 5K. The idea is help people stretch, but it's very much a bring your mate, you know, get someone else out the door. So I think 
getting friends to think about going to an event, but really taking them by the arm and taking them is a very effective way to get people started because you can help them get ready for the event. And then they, you know, they've got your support going through it, through an event. And then, as you know, it sort of can catch fire from there. Yep, absolutely. And and I'm sure you've seen the way Park Run has kind of taken over the UK and I took my sister, who is not a runner, to do her first perk run last year. And just seeing the change in her throughout that 5K of, you know, never really run before, but just seeing the competitiveness come out in her and just how it changed her thinking was was wonderful. So I definitely would agree with you with that, bringing someone along. And I love park run um, and all the free fitness movements now. This is the other thing to that's even more accessible and a great starting point for people. The November Project, the yes. Free Fitness Open Run in New York with NOR. There's so many groups now that have free fitness opportunities that one of our opportunities is to help shine a light on that. But I think Park Run really, I give a lot of credit to, and then November Project coming behind them of, of helping groups realize that they could get a lot of people moving and just be out there on a, on a regular basis. And it would add a huge support in people's lives. Absolutely. Yep. Great. Thank you. All right. We are just going to take a moment to thank our sponsor. We will be right back with the final kick round. By now, you've probably heard me talk about how a body health perfect amino is the perfect blend of the eight essential amino acids to help you build and repair your muscles, your tissues, and of course, improve recovery. I take it along with their complete plus detox multivitamin and during my recent marathon build up I took perfect amino a few times a day which allowed me to bounce back from my workouts quicker and to keep training hard so I could have a good race in the fall which is kind of important right? Have you used coupon code TINA10 yet? The body health team would love to hear your feedback Yes, another reason I love them. And you can share your experience with Perfect Amino through the show notes for this episode by visiting runnersconnect.net forward slash body health. Oh, and you can enter to win a six pack worth $230 there too. So once again, that link is runnersconnect.net forward slash body health. I wish you all the luck. This is the time of year many of us commit to being better and doing what we can to reach our goals. For me, it's doing more stretching and mobility work, and you've heard me admit it here, so hold me to it. But once the busyness of life, the nasty weather, and the tiredness from training accumulates in our legs, that motivation slips away, and it can be really hard to get it back. Now, we could reward ourselves with food, but after all that indulging over the holidays, most of us probably need to work on making better choices. We all know that new running shoes or new running clothes have a bit of a power to get us excited about running again, especially if they look stylish. The Saucony Freedom ISO has become my new favourite shoe, not just because they're nice to look at, but because the Ever Run soul gives back with every step. So even on my most tired day, I feel like I'm getting a little bit of a push from the ground. I absolutely love them and I think you will too. So if you live in the US, make sure you use coupon code TINA to get 10% off your order at Saucony.com. All right, Mary, just five more little questions for you, starting with the greatest advice you've ever received. Uh, reach for the stars. Love that. Love that. Do you add the other, the second part of that quote on, or are you like leaving it as a uh, reach? That's it. Stars? My dad uh, and my mom, <laughs> I don't, you know, I, I, I think I didn't realize what a big world it was, but they would always say, reach for the stars. Yeah, I love that. That's great. Very true. All right. Uh, favorite running book or blog? Uh, I have to say, I tend to like books that, and I love when I know people who are writing. So Liz Robbins, A Race Like No Other of the New York City Marathon mm-hmm. is a classic. A classic, classic. I like some of the run, I sound like a nerd, but um, Once a Runner, yep. Running with the Buffaloes, like the old style books about back in the day, pretty serious running inspired me at different points in my career. And then, you know, I read the more popular ones now too. Um, blogs and sites I definitely follow uh, the let's run guys will love this their home page is the best link through to every other running article so i go there and flow track and runner's world of course blogs and bloggers i love you know following lauren fleshman mm-hmm. and oh, yeah. many of the now more fitness based bloggers i'll follow too but um mm-hmm. you know i just i'm lucky to live and breathe running and sports so mm-hmm. i you know follow a fair amount yeah. of 
No, that's, there'll be a lot of people that you just made very happy by giving them a shout out. So <laughs> thank you for that. Um, what would you like to tell a brand new runner? That you can do this. I love that. I just love step by step. And, you know, we dream big and reach for stars and the marathons and the miles and the big events are the catalyst. So use those but it's all about step by step and you can be a step better tomorrow. And a year later you can wake up and be miles ahead of where you might ever thought you could have been. Absolutely. Yes. So true. And uh, just another side question. What would be one piece of advice you would give someone for running the New York marathon for the first time? Anything you would say? Run, run hills in advance, be ready for the hills. And my advice until I ran it was, save your energy. The second half is tough. <laughs> Don't high five everybody. Now that I've done it, I change it all around and say, get really, really fit so that you can high five people and use a lot of energy in the early miles and still be fine at the end. <laughs> okay, great. There you go. You heard it from the source. All right. Um, what is your pre-race meal? I, you know what? I, I'm not very specific, especially it might be, you know, being part of family, you go with the flow. I recently have actually had have been looking at since running Boston. I did gluten free, which I'm not usually gluten free, but I'll have anything a mix of carb and protein. But usually some protein and usually avocado, some fat like that. And with the carbs, I don't like all carbs. And I try to eat earlier in the evening. I don't like to eat late at night the night before a race. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. And finally, favorite running product. Favorite running product, I've got to say, I think I spent 20 years not wearing a watch. And now between my Garmin and Strava and RunKeeper, I love just really, really, I probably would have to say if I said one Garmin, but I love having, it's like having a training partner because you know, you're recording it, whether it's, um, <laughs> yeah. oh, you know what I'm going to say? I'm going to say something different. Okay. Because I love those things. But my phone, I um, I take pictures on the run all the time, mm -hmm. and it's such a great way for me to feel like I might be sharing some of this run with somebody, and I find it entertaining to me. Can I can I get a shot without slowing down and just capturing these runs that even just for me they help me remember, especially with Strava's from looking at the photos. I love doing that each run, mm -hmm. and my phone, when I'm not running with a buddy, I, I really love listening to podcasts. So how about that for a plug for you yes. guys? So you do listen to the Run to the Top podcast? So uh, yes, of course, right yeah. here, downloaded. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so if the hardcore people might not like it, but my phone is definitely probably my best tool for running. No, I think there's nothing wrong with that. And a lot of people would agree with you. Well, Mary, thank you so much for your time. And I know you are incredibly busy, but we appreciate the time you've taken today. And it was wonderful to hear from you. Great to speak to you, Tina. Thanks for all your great work. Thank you. I feel like there was literally a million directions I could have taken that episode. And there were so many more questions I wanted to ask her. And I therefore apologize that I wasn't able to get to them all, but you can only imagine how crammed Mary's schedule was, is. So just having it was a treat in itself. So this was an episode I worked really, really hard for and Mary made it not only worth it, but she was even more inspirational than I thought she would be and really humble as well, especially for someone who's changed that many lives. Okay, Tina, like <laughs> time to stop fangirling it and wrap it up here. But I want to say, if you have enjoyed these episodes of Run to the Top, I would love if you could share these episodes with your friends and family through Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or even just sending them a link through a text message. The more people we can get listening to episodes like this, the more I can get the attention of superstars like Mary and other people. And I just want to thank you and take a moment to really tell you just how much I appreciate that you tune in every week, that you subscribe to the podcast and that you just give me part of your time. It really, really means so much. And remember, you can always email me, tina at runnersconnect.net, if you have any questions or suggestions. I would love to hear from you. So next week, we're going to be talking to Jeff Galloway about the empire. Can I call it an empire? I think it probably is. 
He is built for runners, uh, from the run walk program for beginners to the events he's working on now. This is another one of those names in the running industry that just everyone knows. And you're not going to want to miss this one. He had some fantastic advice. So until next time, have a great week. Thanks for listening to the Run to the Top podcast from runnersconnect.net. 